Okay, so I'm gonna try and complete this the last time. Um, see some turn. Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and welcome to another episode of Community Conversations with Susan Turk. Hi, I'm Sus. Sounds like shiz. Nice to meet you. All right, we're gonna get started. That's just what I say, I guess. It's all good. All right, Susan. Hi. Tell us about yourself. Uh. Hi, I'm Sus. <laughs> Sounds like shoes. I'm 51. I'm single. I live out in the hilltop on 25 acres. Something called bug dust. I learned mm -hmm. when you clear the land, the, the dirt underneath, it's like talcum powder. Um, do not open your door. No, I'm just teasing. Yeah. Do not open your door. Let's see what else. I'm a licensed nail technician, I'm Utah licensed right now, working to transfer my license into Nevada so that I can start producing and then we'll have a little business hopefully called Hollywood Style Nevada. No. Right, where? It's going to be interesting. I do um, all custom work. I'm more of a nail artist than a nail technician. I'm slow, but I'm good. <laughs> I'll tell you that. And um, what else? I am an ordained minister and a wedding officiant, so hopefully I'll be able to perform ceremonies very soon. Um, unfortunately, I think we've spoken about this once before, but um, I had a, a little run of bad luck when I first moved into town last year. And with that said, it sort of slowed down my progress. But I'm here and back and I'm rip roaring and ready to go. Awesome. What brings you to Bad Mountain? How long have you been here? Um, so originally, um, uh, this is interesting, I didn't mention this before. So um, I am clinically diagnosed as um, permanently disabled with five diagnoses and a very, very poor prognosis. Mm -hmm. um, that said, my diagnosis are PTSD domestic mm -hmm. with, it's called abandonment and neglect issues. A lot of it has to do with childhood traumas and things. but. Point being, in, uh, at uh, the age of, I believe it was 46, 46, oh my, 51, five years ago. Yes, January, March, April, May. May of 2014, I won permanent disability for life based on PTSD domestic with what they call fingers, which is something I hope we can get into one day, a little bit about mental health mm -hmm. and some support and such like that. That said, um, panic anxiety, and OCD. I've been doing a lot, a lot of work with a lot, a lot of providers over many, many, many years because I had a doctor who once said to me, you know, without a sports system, the odds are very much against you. And I said, okay. And of uh, folks like me, how many of you had? And he said, a few. He said, of those few, how many made it? And he looked at the floor and said, a few. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a pretty high IQ. I'm pretty clever and I like a challenge. So once you know what you're dealing with, you can flip it all around. You can flip it all around. And uh, I lost a friend to suicide. Um, I knew I would. For 20 years, I knew I would. And there was nothing I could do. I knew. It was set. Her mother did too. And sometimes, you know, the divine works in that way. But I decided that, you know, no. No, 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 no. So presently, I'm five years out. Um, I see a therapist here at the clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually done now. I'm nearly symptom free. Thank you. Nearly symptom free. I don't take any medications. However, I'm an advocate and supporter of um, medicinal marijuana cannabis and even recreational, you know, in the right place in the right time. Okay, that's your call. But for me personally, um, it served to work miracles. So um, we were talking about. I lost my train of thought. Hi, I'm 51. Should I say that? 10 second Tom, like, you know, in 50 first dates. We were talking about some spiritual things. Right. Um, and we were talking about our your opinion on God. And we started talking about Abraham. Oh, that was in the last take. But if you want to switch off. We can, uh, we're, we can we're, go wherever. We can go. Wherever we're going. Um, oh, no, I was talking about disabilities. Oh, four, 40, 46. Um, they told me in the court that I w I'm the youngest female ever in the state. Mm -hmm. 
to win permanent disability for domestic PTSD ever. Um, and that was what we were getting at. And that said, I'm overcoming everything in life. Like, I don't want any accolades. I don't want anything. It's just I made an actual factual decision that no way, uh-uh, uh-uh, just uh-uh. I'm, I'm, it's not rejection, but I know what I'm dealing with. And now what I learned is that I just, what I learned is about diversity, and we're going to get into diversity. Okay. So everybody's perspective is different. And something, I, I'm, I was born gifted with different gifts, and some are curses and some are not until you learn how to manage everything mm -hmm. and you're aware. So, okay, for example, how tall are you? Five seven. Okay, so you're five seven, and I'm, well, I'm five two now, but I was five three, I'm old. And so, but that's it. Um, okay, so we look at and somebody might go, oh, well, he's short and she's short, or he's petite and she's petite. It's just all in the perspective. Mm -hmm. So with that, when I was born and I was old enough to understand that I was different, mm -hmm. you know, because I had an OCD and I mean perfection and I'm a Capricorn and just things. I'm a workaholic, I get super focused, sometimes I scatter, things like that. And so I never realized until I was older through lots and lots of therapy that I, I think I grew up believing that everybody was like me or I was like everybody, but I didn't fit like square peg round hole. Do you think any of us fit in? You know what? I think that we all fit together. But, but not, we've separated so much mm -hmm. and we're so bogged down with so much. And then it's the one you spoke about. I mean, he has the Ten Commandments on a sign, which is great. But my uh, favorite, the last one, thou shalt not covet. Mm -hmm. We need to stop. I'm not going to preach here, but from personal experience. Okay, don't judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. So... You might look on the, okay, for example, I don't have my, I told Jeremy, I don't know if I want to go on film, I don't have my, my little retainer in with my two. And then I thought, you know what, who cares? This is me. I am who I am. And yeah, I lost the two five, six years ago, mm -hmm. but I have a life. That said, we, we are not standing in the shoes of the person standing in their shoes. So we have to stop judging the books by their covers. We don't know everybody's circumstance. And, um, you know, they brings up an interesting topic was you know what does beauty look like when we all look so different a beauty doesn't look like what we look like what is a car when you drive it what it's your vehicle <laughs> yeah what is your body a vehicle it's your vehicle mm -hmm. why are we looking at the outside look into the eyes I, that's I, what i wanted to talk to you about yeah. in the last take mm -hmm. was we've all okay now in certain cultures my ex is a Sunni Muslim, and in certain cultures, you cannot look into the eyes. Mm -hmm. So as a woman in a Muslim culture, and as a Jew, I'm allowed to marry a Muslim, he's allowed to marry me, I do understand. Don't do it. Sorry, but just don't do it. It's just a bad idea. So 20 years later, here I am. It's just cultural difference. It's not such a good idea. But mm -hmm. that said, um, it, he couldn't look me in the eye. Because I had a child, he assumed that I was married. He couldn't look me in the eye. Mm -hmm. When I went to the Middle East, I went to Jordan. I was there for 17 days. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm pretty smart. I picked up the language really quick because my husband kept it from me. That's one of the things to do with American women. Mm -hmm. And it's not a racist issue. It's a cultural issue. And it's different diversity. Mm -hmm. different, a whole different phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So um, there are certain cultures you cannot look into a person's eyes. Mm -hmm. But in the American culture, I totally wait. Look into my eyes, man. That's where the soul lives. Your soul is in your eyes. I can look you right in the eye and I can hold it. But most people cannot. And they don't want to. Because if, if folks, I believe... You know what's interesting when you say that? When someone is... Usually what I found in, in my own personal studies is when someone is hurting you, they're not looking you in the eyes. They can't. They can't. Because when you see... when you when you look into someone's eyes, when you're hurting them, you see, you see you yourself. See their, right, it's a mirror. You see yourself. Oh, absolutely, it's a mirror. Mm -hmm. A mirror. And that's a funny thing because I actually asked somebody, <laughs> same gentleman who saved my life, um, um, decided that they didn't want to particularly have a, you know, a relationship with me anymore. Who knows? Things going on and such. It's mm -hmm. understandable. We all have to grow. 
but we talked about growth a lot because I missed out on a lot in the 20 years that I was married in an interfaith religious marriage thing. It's all good, but I, I he, he made this one quote, you know, we'll see what happens when we get to the edge. You know, maybe we'll leave, maybe we won't. Okay, so I don't know exactly what happened to me, but either somebody like punched me and I fell off, or I lost my balance and I dipped off and boom, or I jumped and thought he was there, or I just jumped, or I don't know, but somehow, like Humpty Dumpty, you know, you fall on the ground and you're you're shattered. Mm -hmm. Not just from this, from everything in your life, it builds up. Mm -hmm. And your heart is shattered. It's already paced and broken, but you find the strength to take it back, put it back. And get up, and then for me, I grew my wings. I, I feel like the wings come through forgiveness. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. what I feel like. Cause, Absolutely. Like, and the forgiveness for, isn't for them; it's for you. Yeah, and it's and it, and and it's the thing is, the more you're broken, like a glass, right, falls, you get like a few shards, right, and then you break it even more. Or they spread, and you're breaking and even more until with it's our sharks. Uh, yeah, until you've just got nothing but just it's so thin it can literally evaporate into the air, but then you become a part of something greater than a glass. There was a meme on social media that said, um, "Soul, what was it? Uh, soul separation and shadow work." This is uh, something I'm working towards as one of my goals. I want to do life coaching. And I like to get into hypnotherapy. I started studying. My husband fell ill. I had to back out, but I was doing really well. And I like to work on past life regressions and hypnotherapy to help people to overcome their blocks, mm -hmm. the things that hold you back, which that's going back to the cliff. Mm -hmm. So if however I got off this cliff and fell to the ground, it was the greatest gift of my life because when I fell to the ground, this time I didn't have a hundred people hovering over me, family, friends, whatever your circle is. And we know that we all pressure, we all think we're right, we all want to help. But there was literally nobody there and I had to do it. I had to do it and I was afraid and it was winter and it's scary, you know, and I'm in a new place and a pellet stove. Freaking pellet stove is nice. Hey, I love it now. It's a stove that you put wood pellets in that oh. heat your house. But it's new to me. I'm from Los Angeles. You know, I'm not a princess or anything, but so Battle Mountain different. Is, is different.